Now let's talk defense, shall we? His first defensive pick, go figure. Ohio State's Chase Young to the Redskins at number two. All he did, produce 16 and a half sacks and six force fumbles in 2019, both of which led the FBS. Next up, another Buckeye product, cornerback Jeff Okuda going number three to the Lions. The last DB taken with the top three picks, Ohio State's Sean Springs in 97. At four, Mel has Clemson's Isaiah Simmons. He posted a 4.39.40 at the Combine. That's the second fastest time by a linebacker at the Combine since 06. He has him headed to the Giants. The Panthers will take Auburn's Derek Brown at number seven. Auburn has never produced a top 10 overall pick on the defensive line since the common draft era began. And South Carolina defensive tackle Javon Kinlaw heading to the Jags at nine. He had the second highest pressure rate in the FBS last season when he lined up as a defensive tackle. Quite the group, Mel. Who impresses you the most? Wendy, 19 offensive players in this mock, 13 defensive players. But of those defensive players, as you mentioned, some studs that will be at the top of the board in any draft year. It doesn't matter. You're always going to have Chase Young at or near the top of that list with his pass rush ability. As I said, those final three games, he was quiet. That bothered you a little bit. But when you look at the overall body of work, he's going to be expected to be Jadavion Clowney. He's going to be expected to be Miles Garrett, Khalil Mack, that great outside pass rusher. And you think about a guy like Jeff Okuda, Two Buckeyes, Okuda's the shutdown corner. He's what Patrick Peterson was thought to be coming out of college, out of LSU. He's what, think about it, a guy like Tredavious White out of LSU, what he's meant to that Buffalo Bills defense, what Stephon Gilmore's meant in the NFL coming out of South Carolina. Okuda will be expected to be that guy. And Isaiah Simmons, we know what a great cover guy gets after the quarterback. He could be spectacular covering tight ends. He's the kind of guy who fits today's NFL perfectly. All right, Mel, we'll bring back in our quarterbacks. And Matt, how did you game plan as a quarterback against someone as talented as Chase Young? Well, a pass rusher, an elite edge pass rusher is so valuable. You see him at the top of the draft because they do and they can change everything for an offense. I remember going up against guys like Michael Strahan or Vaughn Miller, Dwight Freeney. You got to slide your entire protections. You can only be in a left formation or can only be in a right formation. The running back has to go one way. It cuts your playbook in half if you have to chip in double team, in help. And therefore, plays that you're used to being able to run both ways, you can't do it. And then even a two-minute drive, you talk about finishing plays, closing plays, your two-minute playbook has to go away where you can't have five guys getting out in routes. So you talk about, talk to any defensive back. What's the thing that helps them the most? Getting a pass rush with just four guys, and that's what a great pass rusher can help you do. Tim, you've seen Isaiah Simmons plenty when you've called games. What did you see? Well, I remember, you know, I've had three Clemson games this year. Adam Schefter, late October, early November, asked me, who's the best, you know, player you've seen? And to me, it was Isaiah Simmons, and it wasn't close. Mel mentioned that he's kind of perfect for today's NFL, and the reason why is his versatility. You mentioned his 40 time, under 4-4, at every bit of six foot three. Brenton Venables, the defensive coordinator for Clemson, he'd play him as a deep middle of the field safety. Then he would play man to man against a wide receiver in the slot. Then he'd blitz him through the A gap. Then he would set the edge against the run. He's one of these players that can negate the matchup problems that offenses can create with a versatile tight end. I mean, if you want to find somebody, you know, to, to go outside the numbers and play against a, a big tight end, a Travis Kelsey type of tight end outside the numbers, you know, safeties aren't big enough. Corners aren't strong enough. Receivers, or sorry, linebackers typically aren't, uh, you know, quick enough and don't have the cover skills to do it. I think Isaiah Simmons could turn into a guy that has the ability to do all of that stuff. So it makes a lot of sense. He's a really, really exciting player that covers a lot of ground. Dan, anyone else you've seen that has impressed you? I love those two guys. Um, you know, calling games as well, with, with the same with Tim and Matt. Two guys that just stand out on tape to me are kind of like guys that I deem, what are we going to do about those dudes kind of guys? And it's Kinlaw and Derek Brown. I mean, just watching tape, these two guys are monsters. Wendy, my first start in the NFL was an infamous start, nonetheless, on the road against the Minnesota Vikings. And I remember walking up to the line of scrimmage and seeing Kevin Williams and Pat Williams there, and I was like, 
who are these humans? And when I watch Javon Kinlaw and Derek Brown, that's the way I feel, like watching these guys dominate games. Derek Brown cut on the LSU tape. The LSU offensive line was the best offensive line in America this year. They won the Joe Moore Award. Derek Brown whoops that offensive line. And I just, those two guys, as internal pass rushers for quarterbacks, the one thing that we hate is internal pass rush. You can rush on the outside all you want. We can climb the pocket as long as it's there. If there's no pocket to go, we've got problems. And Kinlaw was dominant against SEC competition. So strictly because those two guys are like, hey, I'm going to coaches in, in, a, in a game plan situation. What, what are we, what are we going to do about those two guys? Because I don't want them anywhere near me. Dano, you're right. I think if you look at the two, I think maybe Ken Law is competing to say, hey, I'm hearing all about Derrick Brown all year, and here I am at South Carolina wreaking havoc as well. Great athlete with versatility. I think you look at, at where they could go, I think Carolina, Jacksonville. Now, there's a little mixed opinion on Ken Law that I have him too high at Jacksonville. Some think he could drop to Atlanta at 16, Dallas at 17. We'll see on Ken Law, but certainly Derrick Brown locked into that top 7-8 overall the way it looks right now. At worst, 9 Jacksonville, but I think Ken Law, there's a little bit more flexibility with when when you start to project him, like I say, from early top 10, maybe down to that 16, 17 range. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.